Hey everyone, welcome to Redwood National Park where Steph and I are going to spend the next two to three days backpacking, visiting some of the tallest trees in the world. And we just were dropped off by a shuttle bus and we're hiking down right now, backpacking toward Tall Trees Grove, about a mile and a half down. And as I hike down, I'm going to explain exactly what we're doing here and what we're going to be seeing. Let me start out by telling you about people known as tree searchers. Now, I was once what's considered a tree searcher. While most people will go out into the forest and just enjoy hiking on the many trails, checking out the incredible redwood trees, there's a small group of people who are known as tree searchers and they want to go out and find the most unique and special trees that exist. And when it comes to redwood trees, those would include the tallest trees, the largest trees, and the ones with interesting and unique features. The question then is why did I get into tree searching? Well, I wanted to find the 10 tallest trees in the world and the persons who discovered those trees did not give out the locations. However, there were some breadcrumbs of clues left. For instance, in books, magazine articles, on the internet, which would allow somebody who wanted to find them to give them somewhere to start. So I got into tree searching to try to find those 10 tallest trees, such as Hyperion, Helios, Stratosphere Giant, Icarus, and Nugget. Listed in order, those are the top five tallest trees, at least for their last official published measurements. Once a tree searcher has gathered up all the necessary clues that they can, they will also need a laser rangefinder as well as a D tape or a diameter tape to measure the DBH or diameter at breast height of a tree because those kind of measurements are published so it will help you in trying to match up the tree and, and finding out if you have the right one. So once you've gathered all your clues you got to go out on location and search the forest, measure trees. A lot of times your search will end in failure and you'll go home. But every once in a while, a tree searcher meets with success and finds the tree they're looking for. And that is a very exciting moment when that happens. Of course, my 10 year old boy, Stefan is here backpacking with me. This is his first time in Redwood National Park. But what's kind of interesting is one year before he was born was when I first found Hyperion. It was August of 2011. These days, the dy dynamic has kind of changed. Nobody can go out and say that they found Hyperion. They can only say they visited Hyperion. What's the difference? Well, because the location has leaked online, people will just look that up and go visit, visit Hyperion. Whereas when I went out to it, I had to use clues and figure out where it was for myself. And that was extremely hard and took a lot of time and effort. When I found Hyperion, I was part of the third person or group to ever find it after the original discoverers. So it was quite special indeed. In August of 2011, after I searched for and found Hyperion, then for my next trip, I moved on and searched for and found Helios, this world's second tallest tree. And then the next trip, was Stratosphere Giant, the third tallest. So I kept working at it until I found all 10 
of the top tallest trees without using any leaked information as far as no GPS coordinates. And now of course that's changed as I mentioned. There's only two trees left as far as I can tell out of the top 10 where their location is not leaked. And those are Helios and Icarus. Might we be paying a visit to those trees on this trip? We'll have to wait and see. I hope that gives a brief overview of my history of being a tree searcher and my success in finding the 10 tallest trees without being given the locations away in the form of coordinates. But now here I am with my son Stefan and I want to take him to see the 10 tallest trees. Some of them are harder to get to than others. I'm not going to be able to take them to Hyperion, but let's see how many of the others I can take him to and we can check out together. It's been many years since I've been here in Redwood National Park where half of the 10 are. So yeah, hope you enjoy coming along with us. This right here is the spot where Tom McDonald Creek drains into Redwood Creek. And due to the location leaks, it's a well-known fact at this point that Hyperion is located up Tom McDonald Creek. However, due to increased vi visitation and damages that have resulted, this area is now closed. And so I won't be able to take Stefan to see Hyperion, the world's tallest tree. Let me explain some more about that when I get back across the creek here. I've gotten back across Redwood Creek here on the other side. I did not go up Tom McDonald Creek at all because as mentioned, it's closed. So why is it close to visitation? Well, NPS states on their website, I've got it right here, that the forest around Hyperion has been trampled and damaged by ill-informed hikers. Those accessing and viewing the tree have trampled and in some cases killed the surrounding native vegetation. All that, of course, is the result of the location of Hyperion leaking, and then as mentioned, careless hikers falling the GPS coordinates going up in the up the creek to visit Hyperion and trampling the ferns and root systems all around Hyperion. So I'm actually happy about the closure. I mean, I'm sad I can't take Stefan up there to see it, but I totally understand and support NPS and the efforts they are putting in place to protect Hyperion. Hyperion's published height is 379.65 feet. However, it was remeasured in 2019 and now Hyperion is said to be 380.8 feet in height. When I found Hyperion, along with my brother Jim, we were the third person or group to find it since it was originally discovered. And when Jim and I found Hyperion, it was actually five years to the day after it was originally discovered in 2006. What was neat is after I got home, I got a note of congratulations from Michael Taylor, who along with Chris Atkins was co-discoverer of Hyperion. So that was neat to hear from him and congratulate us on finding Hyperion. And I just wanted to add one other interesting fact is that when Jim and I spent that day up Tom McDonald Creek searching for Hyperion, it was a 14 hour day of bushwhacking, searching, trying to find it. And only at the very end did we indeed find Hyperion. And I'll share a picture of that with you here. Mm -hmm. 
Stefan and I have arrived at Tall Trees Grove. All right, well, I showed Stefan Hyperion's location as far as Tom McDonald Creek, where it drains into Redwood Creek. But now we're back in Tall Trees Grove and I'm gonna take him to see an actual tree, to see Nugget, the world's fifth tallest tree. I'm standing here in front of Nugget, which is the world's fifth tallest tree at 371 feet in height. You may have seen Stefan and I measuring Nugget with this. This is a D-tape or a diameter tape and it's used for measuring the distance around the tree. And the published DBH or diameter at breast height is 45.2 feet and our measurement was 45.4 feet. So pretty much an exact match and to measure the dbh you need to be about four and a half feet up off the ground and just work your way around the tree when i first located nugget it was the tenth and final tree i needed to find out of the top 10 tallest in the world that's why there's a picture of me holding up all my fingers because this was the tenth and final tree i needed to complete my quest so it was truly a celebration of sorts Our backpacking trip started, of course, at Tall Trees Grove Trailhead. And right here, we're hiking to the Redwood Creek Trailhead, which is 7.7 .7 miles from this spot. But we're not rushing it. Today, our goal is to get to Bond Creek to set up our camp at the junction of Redwood Creek and Bond Creek, somewhere around there. So we're taking it slow, enjoying the trees and Right now we're going to take a quick lunch break before we make our way down to Redwood Creek. Looking back, you can see Tall Trees Grove as we've now gotten down to Redwood Creek and we're working our way down the creek. See Stefan backpacking just ahead.
We're now doing our fifth creek crossing, fifth crossing of Redwood Creek. We're, we plan as far as our backpacking route to probably take the creek all the way down over the next couple of days, but we'll see. We may hop up on the trail at some point. It's very beautiful. We're enjoying just walking through the creek, cooling off. And then as you see behind me there, the tall redwood trees that are lining the creek. Very, very beautiful out here. We are just about to 44 Creek now, and I think we're looking at Harry Cole, the 18th tallest tree in the world. Took a little break there at 44 Creek. A couple pretty cascades as the creek flowed into Redwood Creek. And we're continuing down another mile or so to Bond Creek. And I think that's where we're gonna look to set up camp here on night one.
give you a tour of our camp. Right down there is where Bond Creek flows into Redwood Creek. And this is the view looking upstream. Right here, you can see we've chosen a nice sandy spot. And we have our backpacks here, our food, and cook in just a couple minutes. Stefan's already resting in here. Got our sleeping bags and our pillows. You look comfortable, Stefan. <laughs> so, just a lot of space in here for the two of us. Well, me and Stefan just finished dinner. Our camp is all set up here, right above Redwood Creek, just before getting to Bond Creek. And today we got things started with my efforts to share the world's 10 tallest trees with Stefan. Something that was near and dear to my heart for quite a long time as I was a tree searcher out there trying to find, find those trees. Now, of course, as I think I mentioned earlier, Five of the 10 tallest are here in Redwood National Park, and the other five are over in Humboldt Redwood State Park, which is where we will go next. So today we got things started on day one with visiting two of, of the top 10, in a sense, you could say. We got as close to Hyperion, the world's tallest, as we're allowed to go. So we respected park rules and we just looked across at Tom McDonald Creek and we'll call it, that's the best we can do for Hyperion. So then it came to Nugget, the world's fifth tallest tree. And uh, Stefan, what did you think of seeing Nugget? Oh, well, it was pretty tall. Tomorrow on day two, our quest resumes to continue seeing the world's 10 tallest trees to share that with Stefan. So tomorrow Orion is on the agenda. It's a, one of the most difficult trees to get to. It's way up a creek and hillside, and that means we're gonna have to do a little bit of bushwhacking, Stefan. It's gonna be quite challenging. What do you think about that? You ready for some a bushwhacking challenge? Yeah, I'm always up for a challenge. All right, that sounds good. Well, uh, we're only gonna get to it if we feel it's safe for us to do so. Otherwise, we'll get as close as we can. But also tomorrow, there's a couple of trees in the area that I want to search for. El Magnifico, Baby, and Gulch Tower are also in the same area as Orion. So I'm hoping to see one or more of those it would uh, just add a little special dimension to this trip. So good night, everyone. Hey everyone, it's day two here in Redwood National Park. Stefan and I have gotten up, eaten breakfast, packed up camp, and now we're leaving right behind us. You can actually see where Bond Creek flows into Redwood Creek. It's totally blocked with brush, so you can't really see the stream coming in, but you can see the, the water moving and hear it. Now we're gonna continue downstream toward, working our way toward Elam Creek. This is an interesting section of riverbed. It's dry all the way across, except for a narrow channel far on the left out of view. So kind of interesting wide expanse of dry ground here.
We just took our packs off for a moment. Noticed some pink flagging on the tree. The little trail here. To go up and take a look. Sure enough, trail is right here. Quite overgrown. Very overgrown, fallen trees all the way down. I think we will stick with the creek. Well, remember just a few minutes ago, the riverbed was dry. Now the river is huge. It stretches all the way across. There's only a bank on the left side here that's overgrown by brush, so it's impassable. Stefan, I wanted to ask you, um, this is our second day now hiking down Redwood Creek, and what do you think of it so far? It was good. We're about halfway now for our backpacking here on day two to reach Elam Creek. Haven't seen any other people in a little over 20 hours now. So I take it not that many people backpack the whole stretch here of the creek. But it's been very nice conditions. It's nice outside, the temperature, water is very peaceful. getting deeper. Deeper crossings. We're passing through a huge bend in the creek. See all the redwoods up high.
we've arrived here at Elam Camp. There's three sites here. We're the first backpackers to arrive and set up. We'll see if others come later. But we're gonna go ahead and set up our, our tent and our camp and then cook some lunch before doing a little tree searching. And as you can see with our nets on, the mosquitoes are out in force right now. So a little bit of a disadvantage of sleeping up here in the forest rather than down by Redwood Creek on the gravel bars. But it's a nice camp, so we're gonna go ahead and stay here. Here are the campsites. We've just finished setting up our camp. Nice to have a picnic table. And there's our tent and bear locker. We got some lemonade here, drink mix. Little treat after a long day of hiking on the trail. So for lunch here today, before we do our tree searching, we're going to have a hot meal. So we've got one of my favorites, which is the beef tacos, along with some tortillas. Okay, Stefan, let's have you try one of these tacos. Okay. Some ground beef and some peppers. It's good. Now we finished up lunch, everything's set up at camp, and now, the exciting part of the day. We're gonna do some tree searching. I'm gonna take, hopefully, take Stefan to see Orion. We just crossed the upper Elam Creek Bridge on our way to look for Orion the world's eighth tallest tree. There's a number of other trees in this area, which I have not personally seen, but would like to search for, including El Magnifico, Baby, and Gulch Tower. But we'll see. It might be hard enough just getting to Orion because that's a very challenging tree to reach. So I'm not gonna push it, but I'm gonna see what I can get Stefan to safely. But I'm gonna go ahead and document this effort to get to Orion so that you can see what it's like trying to get to one of these trees. Heading up here. This is not an easy area to get through. Bushwhacking is all about here in Redwood National Park. Getting around stuff. Oh man, so heavily overgrown. I think right here we picked up an old road. There's a, a bend here, totally overgrown, but it's a decent path. Not much of the road left, but it is definitely a road that goes through here. You can see the condition of this old road. It is passable, but there is, it's just so covered with branches. 
and brush and obstacles. It's still easier than bushwhacking straight through the forest, but this is not easy. So we're continuing to go up this road. Lots of ferns here. And we're trying to get to Orion, but I'm not sure if we can make it all the way. I'm not expecting to. Bushwhacking update here as we are trying to work our way through the forest on an old overgrown logging road towards Orion. Conditions are getting worse. I'm not sure how much farther we can continue. Uh, keep in mind I got my 10 year old here, Stefan, and I don't want to push him too hard. So uh, we're probably not going to make it to Orion, but we'll see. We're going to just go a little bit farther and maybe we could find a special tree. I believe Gulch Tower is in this area. So we're going to go ahead and start by looking for that and possibly stop there. Moving ahead still, I believe that one of these trees here is Gulch Tower. I'm going to get a little closer and do some measurements. I believe I've spotted Gulch Tower just ahead through the brush here. There's a tree to the right that's majorly leaning over. I think Gulch Tower is this one to the left of it in the direct center. Still just a little bit more brush to work through to get over there. I think I have found Gulch Tower. What's interesting is there is a gulch right behind it. I can hear water running a little stream that comes down the mountain here. So I'm going to measure the DBH of gulch, what I think is gulch tower right now to confirm. It should be 34.9 feet. We got our D tape. We're going to try to measure it and see if we can get 34.9. Right here, Stefan, hold it. I'm going to go down and around. Slowly and carefully. Down into the gulch. This is not easy to get around this one. Mm -mm. Right on the gulch. Okay, remember we're looking for 34. Point nine. Okay, what do we got? So that I believe is Gulch Tower and I'm just gonna cross through this brush, see if I can get across this gulch real quick and get a view of the tree, get a better view. See a stream is coming through right here. This is indeed Gulch Tower, right in the middle. Just looking upwards, moving out of the gulch, up high above the forest. Towers above all these trees around here. Great view from the other side of the gulch. And this is the zoom view, looking at the top of the tree. Here's in the middle of the tree. Again, that's Gulch Tower right in the middle. You can see a very tall, dead standing uh, tree just to the left of it. And looking at the base of Gulch Tower right above the gulch. Not sure if you can hear the sound of the stream as it goes down this gulch. All the way down that way, but you can see right there where Gulch Tower is right above the gulch. My measuring tape is still on there, I gotta take it off. But here's the view looking straight up from this angle. So I wanted to walk around Gulch Tower and show you why the DBH measurement was a little bit too large. The tape cannot be wrapped around directly in at a continuous central location. Very steep hillside dropping into the gulch here. 
So measuring around this tree correctly would be impossible without more equipment, ropes, or assistance. You can see right here, looking back at the gulch, I went over there to get my view. And then looking up the tree right here, see some fire scars, some burn marks. And just climbing up the rest of the way here. Back to the other side. That's a full view around the tree. This tree is indeed Gulch Tower, the 30th tallest tree in the world, measuring 363.4 feet in height. Now, what's kind of interesting is, right, in planning this trip, this was not a definite on the agenda. I put it down as a potential, because the goal today was to go see Orion. But after heading through the forest for a bit, bushwhacking, I realized it's, it's too much to try to take my 10-year-old son, Stefan. He's a great hiker and adventurer, but I don't want to push things here in the forest where somebody could get hurt. So instead, we ended up getting here to Gulch Tower, which is incredible for me personally, because I've never seen this tree in person. In fact, I can, could very well be the first person to find it after, since it's been discovered. And one final look at Gulch Tower, the highlight of this day here. Redwood National Park looking straight up the tree. What an incredible sight. This is a very cool tree. We are back on the trail now, crossing the upper bridge, having successfully made it to Gulch Tower. Very neat moment in this trip. We did not go to Orion, the eighth tallest tree in the world that was called off due to safety concerns. The forest conditions are not good and I don't want to do anything too challenging for my young son or make things a safety issue. So out of abundance of caution, we did not go to Orion and I did not search for El Magnifico or Baby, which I'd hoped to do. That can be done on a future trip, but let me show you a picture of myself right now standing at Orion, the eighth tallest tree in the world. Just showing you that I have indeed been to Orion before. It's the end of day two. We're down here by Redwood Creek. We just uh, filled up our water and I took a quick dip. Did a little, cooled off in the water. It's 8.30 at night now and that's a wrap. So we're just gonna head back up to camp at Eaglem Camp and cook dinner and call it a night. Catch up with you in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day three here in Redwood National Park. We're going to be packing up camp soon and backpacking from Elam Camp back to the Redwood Creek Trailhead to wrap up our time here in Redwood National Park. It's day three here in Redwood National Park and we've just left Elam Camp and we're taking the Redwood Creek Trail back to our vehicle, which we parked at the trailhead there when we caught our shuttle to Tall Trees Grove. So we're gonna be completing our one-way backpack here today. trail is dropped down by Redwood Creek there on the right, but we choose to be on the trail today after two days of walking down in the creek. It's a nice little change of pace.
beautiful lush greenery through here for the month of August. Passing by right next to the creek here. Makes me want to jump in and go swimming. We are now crossing the MacArthur Creek Bridge. See the creek down there? As well as looking back this way. We are on the other side of the creek now, not too far from our vehicle, on a very well maintained trail through here. Very pretty area through here, love this. But what about Helios? and Icarus, the world's second and fourth tallest trees. I'm happy to report that I did get to take Stefan to see those two very special trees. I'll show you the footage of that now, and then we're gonna be driving on to Humboldt Redwood State Park. So stay tuned for checking out some more of the top 10 tallest trees. Well, we made it. I'm standing here in front of Helios, the world's second tallest tree, measuring in at 376.54 feet at last published measurement. This has always been a really special tree to me, especially being I was part of the second person or group to ever find it while doing tree searching after it was originally discovered. And the neat thing about Helios here in 2023, its location still has not been made public. It's not leaked, it's not been released, it's not been published. So it, this is continues to be the impossible to find tree. Me and Stefan did make it here together, but it was way harder than I remembered it. I guess not coming here in a decade or whatever it's been, you can forget how difficult it can be going through the forest. It was actually October of 2012 when I found Helios after a great deal of searching and investigating, studying clues at home and hiking into this area to check it out. But one thing I wanted to mention is that Helios very well could already be or may soon be the world's tallest tree surpassing Hyperion. Back when Hyperion and Helios were both discovered, it was noted that the growth rate of Helios was greater than Hyperion which means it was gaining more height each year. So I'm not sure, but I could very well be standing at the world's tallest tree right here, but if not, definitely the world's second tallest. I'm currently standing in front of Daedalus, which is the 29th tallest tree in the world. Very special tree. It measures 363.4 feet in height. We went ahead and measured the DBH because I wanted to confirm 100%, make sure I had Daedalus, which is the DBH is 44. This is a very difficult tree to measure, but I came out with 45. So that's pretty much an exact match. Really happy I was able to 100% confirm that this is Daedalus. This right here behind me is Icarus, the world's fourth tallest tree, measuring 371.19 feet in height. Very cool tree, not far from Daedalus.
I'm now here in the Federation Grove. We're visiting Laura Lynn, which is the seventh tallest in the world, measuring at 370.04 feet, at last confirmed and published measurement. Laura Lynn is quite a pretty name for a tree. I really like this particular tree. It's described as a big leaner. And my first visit to this particular tree was in November of 2012. So let me show you a few of the views around Laura Lynn. Stefan and I are, have finished up at Laurel Lynn, and now we're on our way to Paradox. Right after I found Laurel Lynn, which is, was a fairly easy tree to spot, I came here on that November 2012 trip and found this particular tree without having any photos available to me as far as what it looked like. And this is Paradox, the sixth tallest tree in the world measuring 370.34 feet at the last confirmed and published measurement. The Paradox is a really interesting tree to stand under as you look up because as it goes up, there's no branches shooting off to the side. It's just like a, a needle going up. But then a ways up, suddenly branches are just appearing everywhere all around the tree and the canopy gets very thick and you can't actually see the very top of it due to that reason. The Paradox is truly a very interesting tree. Let me show you some views of it now. We've left Paradox behind and we're gonna have a short stop in tree search and then we're gonna continue on to Millennium. Yeah. So you saw Stefan and I measuring this tree we believe this to be Paul Zinke tree, and that is the 21st tallest tree in the world at 365.4 feet in height at last measurement. Now, what are we doing here measuring this one? Well, it's said that this tree may possibly be in the top 10, that the initial measurement of the tree may have been inaccurate as much as three feet. So this possibly could be a current 
top 10 tallest tree in the world and I wanted to make sure to include it. Now when we measured the DBH around the tree, it came out to 30.8. Now the published measurement is 29.8. So I'd say that's close enough to be within the margin of error to be accurate. Let me show you a few, a few views of this, what I believe to be Paul Zinke tree. We had to do quite a bit of off-trail bushwhacking to get from get to Paul Zinke and then to get back to the road. Then we drove the road a little bit further and we dropped down from the road. We're now trying to get to Millennium. We found a trail which looks like it is the one we want to be on. Okay, standing here at Millennium, I'm now going to use my laser rangefinder to check the height. So first I'm going to get the measurement looking up at the very top. And now that I have that, I'm going to get the bottom measurement. And let's see what we've got here. 353.5 feet. Hold it, I'll be, I'll come around, okay? Okay. You got, you got it? Behind me, you can see the ninth tallest tree in the world, Millennium, which at last measurement was 368.8 feet in height. Now you did see us measuring the DBH. So this left side of the tree was 29.6. The right side was 29 and the actual DBH is 28. So it's within the margin of error. I'm pretty sure that the left side there is what is Millennium, but looking up when we were further back there also, the left side definitely looks higher. And this is what I, I thought it, I've always thought that the left side was Millennium, but I wanted to check and just see what the difference was there. Millennium is a very interesting tree because it was discovered just a short time into the year 2000. And that's how it got its name, Millennium because of the time of discovery. And I had the hardest time finding this tree. Gotta remember back when I found these, was out searching for and finding these trees, there were no location leaks and no pictures of it anywhere. So I had to first figure out where the Millennium Grove was. And then I was able to figure out which tree was Millennium. I remember walking into this area with a fellow tree searcher and we stopped. And he said, take a look around. Which tree in this grove do you think is Millennium? So as I looked around, this particular tree caught my attention. And I said, I think that that is Millennium. And it turned out to be correct. So a neat little story.
after leaving Millennium, we hiked back up to the road, drove down a little bit, parked at Cow Creek, and we're now heading down to try to get to Minaret. Going well so far. Some of these trees were a bit harder to get to than I remembered, but you know, I haven't been out here in a long time, so really enjoying our time here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. Going for 33.6. Look at that, 33.4. That's just about a perfect match. Behind me here is the world's 10th tallest tree, Minaret, at 368.3 feet in height. This was a really difficult tree for me to find when I was doing my searching here. I first had to figure out where the Patriarch Forest was, and then had to go into the Patriarch Forest and just measure trees for countless hours. I remember myself and the tree searcher I was with, we were using a laser rangefinder and the DBH, the D-tape. So at the end of the day, we narrowed it down to three trees, which we thought were minaret. And we went home, got back to a little, little more research and found out that one of those three trees we had took photographs of was minaret. So a short time later, I came back and just wanted to get some more photos here. But this is my first time back at Minaret since that time about, oh, 10 years ago or so. We just finished up at Minaret. We're heading back to the vehicle. We're gonna continue a little bit further down to go to our last tree here in Humboldt. But the DBH, we went ahead and measured that. It was 33.4 and the actual is 33.6. That's a near exact match. Really happy with that. Checking the DBH, confirming we indeed had Minaret as I thought we I did 10 years ago when I was last out there. Well, it's on to our sixth and final tree here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. And we're gonna be doing Stratosphere Giant to wrap things up. Really excited to show this tree to Stefan. I think he's gonna be very impressed just seeing how huge and interesting that it looks in comparison to other trees. Some huge trees have fallen off across the trail here the storms of last winter, no doubt. But we're heading off the trail anyway here. 372.73 feet at last measurement in height. This is Stratosphere Giant, the world's third tallest tree. Of course, the tallest tree here in Humboldt Redwoods State Park. Stratosphere was actually thought to be the tallest tree in the world from 2000 to 2006 but then Helios was discovered and that changed everything. It's kind of neat being back here. When I first time that I found Strat, I was here with my sister, Annie, and I think it was my third trip out to the Redwoods to do tree searching. And we 
spent many long hours, I remember, just circling around this forest trying to find this tree until we eventually found it. So it kind of brings back some memories. Of course, before any locations of trees leaked when we were out there searching. But yeah, nice to be back here at Stratosphere Giant and showing it to Stefan. That wraps things up here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. Accomplished everything we're hoping to do here. Took Stefan to see the five trees that are in the top 10 here in this park, plus the bonus tree, just in case. So again, it brought back a lot of memories being here. Extremely challenging finding those five trees before locations were leaked online. So that was a, a fun challenge. Took multiple trips here to find all the trees back then, but it was nice to revisit all them and share them with my son, who's now 10. It's now two weeks later and I'm back here at Stratosphere Giant, the world's third tallest tree. And this is actually where we left off as I finished up sharing eight of the world's 10 tallest trees with my son, Stefan. But now I'm back for one final day of adventure, the grand finale. And that's gonna be visiting Orion and then trying to find El Magnifico and Baby. Here I am back in Redwood National Park, bushwhacking up the Elam Creek hillside. I'm heading in this direction through the forest, heading in the general direction of Gulch Tower, but then I'm gonna break off and head towards Orion. Before I get started, just wanted to share with you something I once wrote about bushwhacking and tree searching in Redwood National Park, because I think it's very true and fitting for this area. Now notice what I said. The terrain can be rugged and intimidating, steep hillsides, impenetrable overgrown thick plants and trees, thorny bushes which cut skin and draw blood, false forest floors that collapse into pits, tall trees that all appear to be the same height, massive fallen trees which block routes, hidden trip vines, no visibility, especially in fog, signs of extensive bear activity all around, and the sheer isolation of being in the middle of nowhere. There are spots along the way where it takes extreme caution to avoid bruises, falls, and broken bones. Truly, I feel like that's a fitting description of attempting to do tree searching through places like this in Redwood National Park. This will be an interesting day for sure. Hoping that I can make it to Orion, and as I think I've mentioned, I'm gonna be searching for El Magnifico and Baby 
two trees I've never seen before. So let's do this. I'm actually now splitting off the route to Gulch Tower and heading through what you see here. I've got to start making my route if I want to get to Orion. Pushing my way through all these ferns and this brush, climbing over fallen logs like this. When bushwhacking through conditions like this, it's you can't usually find an east trail because this is not something that typically people would do. We're gonna take random hikes in the forest. Oh, look at the beauty through here. This area I'm crossing through. But there are easier and harder parts. I actually consider this part to be easy. On a scale of between how bad it can get and how this is. I've got to gain some elevation to get to where Orion is located. So I'm going to gradually kind of work my way diagonal. Try, try to trend uphill, but at the same time I'm heading this way toward the west. Just wanted to show you the view looking straight up here in a tiny clearing. But neat to have all these redwoods towering above me with the crowns and canopies. So I continue making my way up through this. Continuing to work my way through these areas. All kinds of obstacles dealing with. Fallen logs, I've collapsed into a couple pits. It's always nice to step up on a log and get a break. Also look at this tree leaning right here. Leaning right over against the other trees. I checked my tracker and I'm doing, was gaining a little bit too much elevation. I'm actually almost at Orion's height. So I've got to begin going more at a level elevation, but heading in this direction. See this stuff I'm trying to get through here. Fallen tree. Climbing up it. <laughs> I'm okay. I slipped. Hazards of the forest. <laughs> that probably sounded worse than it was. I slipped on this tree I was climbing over. Didn't get hurt at all, just kind of fell down. <laughs> Hazards of the forest, like I said. This is not easy terrain. It requires caution at all times to bushwhack through a forest that's overgrown like this. I do have the experience to safely be out here. As well, I do have a nice first aid kit as well as uh, my satellite device, which could let me call for help if needed. But uh, I personally feel totally safe out here, but I realize this is not for most people. So that's why I shared the words I wrote before, those safety concerns out here, just to alert that this is not for most people. A little downhill section. 
not too bad. Very overgrown. Stepping on many layers of branches and leaves. for some easier terrain soon. This has been a beast climbing this. Oh, a little break area. Nice. Oh, this feels good. This right here is a bit of easier hiking, bushwhacking. Ferns trampled all around the area, probably by bears and deer. But flatter ground without the huge fallen logs and overgrown, extreme overgrown brush makes it easier to get through spots like right here. Gives a little break. Continuing to make decent progress here. Always a decision to make which way to go. For instance, do I continue uphill here? Or do I go forward where it's more level? Check this way first. The routes do not go through sometimes, so. Here is turning back. <sighs> Don't really want to drop elevation while heading toward Orion, except for short stretches if it's necessary to get through an area and see what I'm climbing through right here. Nothing quite like solo bushwhacking through a forest that's heavily overgrown. Not too bad through this area, I'll take it. Taking a look back at the train, I just climbed up here. And many times interesting trees like this are passed by along the route. You can see this burn mark, burn hole at the bottom. But I take note of trees like this because they're interesting, but also because they serve as markers to find the way back. Little route update here. I'm probably somewhere between one half to two thirds to Orion, which is that way. The route hasn't been terribly bad. It's not easy and by any means, but just kind of creating a new route through the forest and happy with it so far. Very tired, drinking a lot of water, but pushing forward. Back at it again. Ugh. If you're wondering about my route to Orion, I am quite far up the hillside. Nowhere near Elam Creek. <sighs> a maze of terrain obstacles here. Whoa! <laughs> Ground gave way. 
kind of crossing over a little pass here where I have to start working my way down toward the left fork of Upper Elam Creek. I've got to get across that, but at the same time, I don't want to lose a lot of elevation. So, it's all about the route. How overgrown is it, and is it passable? As you can see, I'm doing a little bit of downhill here. Dropping a little elevation toward the creek, creek but angling to my left. Dead top spire right there. But let me show you just below it. This is a very interesting spot. See how nice that ground is? I look this way. There's a clear path down to the fork of Elam Creek. Everywhere around there's overgrown brush except for right here where I could get through So I have to drop to the creek here. I got to drop this elevation because I Don't think there's gonna be a better place to try to get across that fork than straight below. I Am really surprised to see such a clear route down to the creek Not to say that it's easy. This is steep downhill with trees falling over and brush But it's a clear path I can see straight through all the way down. That's very unusual out here in the middle of the forest. I don't actually have to bushwhack, I just have to scramble downhill basically on this route. Whoa. Like I said, it is steep. It'll be a bit of a tough climb coming back up this later. Take a lot of energy. A lot of energy is expended out here, bushwhacking through the forest. Continuing down this natural gully or path. I think this is probably too steep to have been a road at one time, but who knows? Probably just a natural gully. There's been several spots where I could have turned off to the left and probably maintained some elevation. But this route's just too good to turn off, to turn down. Um, so I'm continuing down it. The drawback, as I mentioned, the elevation loss. Orion is higher up, but it's across the opposite hill. So I have to cross the fork of the creek and begin going up the other hillside. Just about down to the fork of the creek I was trying to get to. I've kept going downhill towards it, knowing I need to cross this creek. So that's why I took this route, even though I gave up my elevation. You can see just below the bottom of the creek. Taking a short rest break here just before trying to cross this creek. Real steep section just ahead. Orion is 0 0.15 miles from here. It's really not that far, but it'll take a while with the forest terrain. That could easily take 30 minutes or more just to do that 0 0.15, but I'm getting there. Taking a look around what I came down. I think I'm gonna pop off this log and go around it like that, and then down to the creek crossing right there. Maybe try to scramble up that hillside to the left of that fallen log to get up some elevation over that way. I made it into the fork of Elam Creek. Listen to the water. Now this is the route ahead, up the other side, and this is looking down the fork of Elam Creek. But looking over here, draw your attention to something. Notice the splits and decay in the wood. So, gotta be careful with stuff like this because these logs could be hollow inside and you could actually fall through and get stuck in one. The other option for me is to drop to the left of the log and work my way up next to it. 
I've dropped down to the left side of this huge fallen tree because it was a little bit too steep and slippery climbing directly on it. So this hillside is still steep, but the trees knock down a lot of brush so the train's easier. Fallen log I've been falling up. I'm actually gonna split off right here and work my way in this direction. The towering tree there and that's kind of directly toward Orion in that direction. I believe I'm in the vicinity of El, El Magnifico. If you look at these three impressive trees shooting up into the air there, El Magnifico could be one of those or could be behind it or to the right a little bit. And continuing to climb through this area steeply uphill very steeply, I should say. This has been very slow going lately. I'm trying to make progress through here, mainly the steepness of the terrain. Finally leveling out for a moment. By leveling out, I mean not so steep. This has been a rough stretch. <laughs> Can't deny I've floated the idea in my head of turning back, calling it off. But at this point, Orion should be in sight. There's just so many tall trees here in the Orion Grove. I don't know which one it is until I get closer. Uh, I'll just keep taking it slow. Well, if I had to guess that tree in the center background right in the middle, kind of at the low spot. I think that's Orion. If not, Orion's one of the trees right next to it. But I can clearly see where Orion should be from here. Passing through an interesting break here in this fallen log. Look at that burn mark. I'm now 300 feet from Orion, clearly into the Orion Grove. No question about that. Look around at all these trees. Indeed, the Orion Grove. A little bit more climbing to do through here. Feeling energized knowing that Orion is so close at this point. I'm now less than 100 feet from Orion. I don't know how I did this again. I'm about 10 years older than when I first went to Orion. And here I am about to successfully accomplish a solo bushwhacking route to get back to Orion. As really what I called would be a grand finale. Doing the final few steps here to get to Orion. Whoa, whoa. And what do we have here? Made it to Orion. Unbelievable. All right. Made it to Orion, the eighth tallest tree in the world at 370.01 feet at last confirmed and published measurement. And definitely in my eyes, the hardest tree to get to. Not many people who are into tree searching even bother trying to get to Orion. I only know of a handful of people that have ever been here. One tree searcher told me there's no way he would even attempt to go to Orion, just knowing how difficult the journey is. And I can't blame him. I'm so happy to be back here. If you want to know a little bit about Orion, Orion was initially found by LIDAR. And if you don't know what LIDAR is, for those that are new to hearing about tree searching and tallest trees. So 
At one point, airplanes flew over the top of Redwood National Park as well as some of the state parks and lasers were shot down to the ground to measure the, the height of the trees. And Orion was one of the trees that was found in that way that ground searchers initially missed. Of course, follow-up was necessary as those who uh, are credited with discoveries of these trees had to come out, measure it, climb it, and uh, fully document it. But that's how Orion was originally found by LIDAR. I'm just happy I made it here for my second time. I don't plan to ever come back. But uh, I'm gonna take some, show some views around Orion and then get out of this area. Hey bear. Hey bear, get out of here. Not sure if there's a bear, but I heard something crashing through the forest just below Orion here. Pulled out my bear spray. It stopped coming this way, whatever it was. It's about time to clear out of here. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, yeah, I'm heading out of here after hearing animal crashing through the forest down there. See Orion behind me. Time to say goodbye to Orion. Now, El Magnifico is supposed to be within sight from Orion. I think I see it across the way here. So, I'm behind schedule. I gotta head out of the forest, but El Magnifico looks like it's kinda on the way, so I may try to wrap things up with checking that out. I don't think baby's reasonable to attempt today. As I'm heading out of Orion, I see a nice window to try to measure it and see what kind of height I can get on my, my forestry laser. So let's check it out. I'm gonna first measure the high point that I could see and then I'm gonna measure the low spot I could see at the base and see what the reading is. See right here, I got 306 feet. Obviously Orion's quite a bit higher than that, but I can't see the very top. So this is a decent reading from this angle, looking at Orion. Here's the view I had of Orion from looking across this little area. See quite a bit of the tree. View looking to, around at the Orion Grove here. So I'm trying to cross over to El Magnifico. I think I've spotted El Magnifico right there in the center background. About a hundred feet from where I'm standing here. Working my way over to what I think is El Magnifico. I think it's going to be that tree right there. I got to get a little closer to determine not sure if that was the same tree I was looking at from farther back or not. This is indeed El Magnifico. I can confirm that. 
after measuring the DPH. And when I talk about measuring the DPH, what I basically mean is measuring the circumference, the distance around the tree. And it's supposed to be 44 for El Magnifico. And believe it or not, even though I was measuring here by myself and it was a lot of, had a hard time doing it, I came up with 44.3. That is a pretty close measurement. And there's no doubt this is El Magnifico, especially with a couple of green tags I found around the tree. What makes El Magnifico special? Well, it is the 228th tallest tree in the world. So it's not special for its height, but it is barely there within the top 250 trees. But El Magnifico measures 349.7 feet in height, that last published measurement. And when I asked Michael Taylor about El Magnifico, he mentioned that it was big, slow tapering with a giant crown. So that's what makes it special. Plus it's pretty much here in the Orion Grove. So you can't beat that visiting Orion. And then I was able to check out El Magnifico. Well, I did it everyone. Back at the Upper Elam Bridge, having made it to Orion and found El Magnifico. Gave it everything I had. That's what it took to make it. So, heading back to the trailhead now. Hope you enjoyed that craziness. Enjoying a nice sunset here at Palmer Point as this adventure comes to an end. Really had a special time out here with my son Stefan, sharing eight of the top 10 tallest trees with him and then returning by myself to do a little solo adventure to Orion. So thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed In Search of the Tallest, a Redwood Adventure. Take care everyone.